Right. So page eight. I know what you're thinking at this point. What color digital pen is he using? Purple. It's purple. All right. So there you go. No more wait. The wait is over. Number one. The most common isotope of hydrogen contains a proton and an electron separated by about this distance. The charge of a proton we know is this doesn't even need to tell us that because we know from chemistry the charge of a proton is the same as an electron in terms of value but opposite in terms of sign so proton would be just the positive version of that still times 10 to the negative 19th because remember negative up here doesn't mean actually negative value it just means really small value much smaller than one and the charge of an electron we already know What's the electric force between the two particles? So they are they are still measured in charge. Each one of them still has a, a type of charge. So each one now becomes Q. One of them is the charge of an electron. One of them the charge of a proton. And we know the distance apart from up here. So again, kind of like previous problems, I would say do this as one problem by itself, and then divide the two to get this final answer. Um, you can do it in one in one problem, but um, it tends to throw the calculator off sometimes, or a lot of times if you aren't really careful about wrapping everything in the top in parentheses, dividing, and then everything in the bottom in parentheses as well. Personally, I just say do it in, do it in two separate problems. It makes it life a little bit easier that way, or a lot easier that way. All right, number two, neutral balloon develops a charge of negative 8 times 10 to the negative 15th coulombs after being how many electrons did the balloon gain? So this is a really good Q equals NE type problem because I know I don't have a second charge. So using Coulomb's law equation and solving for a second charge, or I'm going to be trying to figure out something in terms of my number of electrons. Um, so let's see which which that is. And it does tell me how many electrons did the balloon gain. Well, this is the only problem that's actually talking about, or the only formula that looks at the number of electrons. So Q equals N E it is. I've narrowed it down to that. Um, so I know my overall charge. I know the charge of one electron. Well, now I can figure out how many electrons it gained. Negative 8 times 10 to the negative 15th divided by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th gives me 50,000. Now, there's still a lot of students, uh, I don't want to say a lot of students, but a significant number enough that end up starting like this. They'll put the negative 8 times 10 to the negative 15th here, and then they'll say, well, do I divide or do I multiply or what exactly do I do with my other number? Well, here, just looking at this, this is really confusing to me um, because the formula is not there. If, the formula is not there. It's very hard to know. Well, do I do I do division? Do I do multiplication? If I do, which one's divided by which one? If you have the formula there every single time, it'll help you. Because really, it's not that I'm trying to do negative eight times ten to the negative fifteenth divided by negative one point six times ten to the neg negative nineteenth. Really, what I'm trying to do here is trying trying to get n by itself. I'm it just so happens that in order to do that, I need to do division by what an electron is, negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Right? And then I would end up getting n by itself after figuring out what that is. And then if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So then it becomes negative 8 times 10 to the negative 15th divided by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. So that's why the formula, albeit a, a fairly simple one compared compared to what we have here, other, other formulas that we could have here, uh, it's still really crucial to write that formula out because it will tell you what to do. Uh, you don't have to guess, what do I divide by? All right, letter B. What is the charge of a sweater after the balloon is rubbed on it? Well, if, if I end up with... Uh, taking 50,000 electrons off, and that equates to a, a negative charge of negative 8 times 10 to the negative 15th, well, that means the sweater must have had to be the thing that lost those 50,000 electrons or lost that 
uh, negative 8 times 10 to the negative 15th charge. So it ends up being positive overall. The reason that we can just say, well, it's just a positive version of this is because those electrons had to come from somewhere. Uh, they ended up coming from the sweater, which means if we've lost a whole bunch of electrons, now we've become positive. We didn't gain positive charges, it's just that we lost negatives, so we have the positives left behind. All right, number three. We uh, comb our hair, comb pulls off a thousand electrons. What's the charge of the comb in your hair? Again, this is a pretty good Q equals NE type problem because we know how many, how many electrons we're dealing with. There's no other formula that deals with a number of electrons. There's another formula that deals with charge, but not a number of electrons by itself. So that's a way that we can narrow this down. Um, the other way that we can narrow this down is realize we're not talking about distance and we're not talking about force. So we're left with Q equals NE. So I know how many electrons I have, um, and I know the charge of 1,000 times this gives me negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 16th coulombs. So that's the comb, because the comb is the thing that's gained those electrons. It's, it has these additional 1,000 electrons. And it makes sense, then, that it's going to be more negative. The hair, uh, or your hair, on the other hand, is going to be the positive version of this. Because, excuse me, because again, these negatives had to have come from somewhere. Well, they came from the hair, so that means the hair is left over with positive charges because it lost these negatives. So these numbers will be the same when charging by friction. Uh, letter B, what's the attractive force between your hair and the comb when the comb's 0.3 meters away? Well, now I'm dealing with a distance. So the minute I start dealing with a distance, I know I've got this Coulomb's Law equation that I have, Q1, Q2 over D squared. So I know it's 0.3 meters away. That's where I'm getting this 0.3 from. The squared is part of the formula. I know the constant for K. It's always 9 times 10 to the 9th. And now this... I have to pull from the previous problem. Right, the comb had a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the 16th, and our hair positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 16th. So I already know in the end, even before going to solve this, my, my force should come out to be negative because this is going to be attracting an attracting force. Right? an attractive force. And it makes sense that it should be an attractive force because opposites attract. I've got negative, I've got positive, so it should be a force of attraction. Positive, negative, that'll give me negative over here. So then when I go to solve, again, I would say do this whole part as one problem. Do this whole part and divide the top by the bottom after you've done that. Um, throw it in your calculator as one problem if you want, but I would not recommend it. All right, and we do come out with a negative, so it looks like we're we're good in terms of the concept. Negative force isn't really negative force; it just means an attraction, a force of attraction. And then we've got the rest of our number from there: negative 2.56 times 10 to the negative 21st. If you remember your rules for scientific, negative 21st seems like it makes um, makes good sense right off the bat. Um, if not, not a big deal. Plug it in your calculator and you get the same thing. So if you wanted to make sure that this was correct, you could plug it back in here um, and then just make sure that both sides equal negative 2.56 times 10 to the negative 21st. In this case, you should get both sides exactly being the same if you do the check step because that's pretty much what you did here in order to get this was essentially what the check step would be. All right, number four. A young man accumulates a charge of positive 2 times 10 to the negative fifth while sliding out of the front seat of a car. His girlfriend, who's two meters away, has picked up some extra electrons and now has a charge of negative 8 times 10 to the negative fifth. What's the electric force that's acting on them? Um, so we, we know what his charge is. Right, he accumulates a charge of this, which means in order for him to accumulate this charge, he must have had to lose electrons. Um, we know that charge 2 is this, negative 8 times 10 to the negative 5th. 
Um, and then we can tell right away this is going to be an, a force of attraction because uh, we've got positive here, negative here. And we know that his girlfriend's two meters away. So two and the squared is from the formula, so that's four. Do everything along the top, divide by four on the bottom, you come out with a force of negative 3.6 newtons. So not a not a huge force of attraction. That should make sense. Realize, you know, when we're walking around next to people, sometimes you're gonna have a charge, they're gonna have a charge, but you're never actually gonna be like pulled in towards one another from the charge that it's you know, that it's so great. It's a because it's a, a really small force. And even this in reality is actually a fairly large a fairly large force and this would only equate to about a pound of pressure or about a pound of um, weight so to speak so not very much so is this force attractive or repulsive well they're boyfriend and girlfriend so you would hope it's attractive but let's see uh, force is negative uh, well negative is an attractive force so look at that things are working out for a happy couple for a little bit at least uh, until you know, three months for a high school relationship. All right, till the next time.